Hey everybody, it is Seth Baptor. I am back for a third video in the series of creating a tabbed book. We're gonna leap right in. I'm gonna take you through the book as it is at this moment. And then we're gonna just work on and we're gonna get the third demo done and there definitely will be a fourth. All right, so let's shift cameras. And let's get the party started. Okay, this is the book. And I just want to walk you through it. It is originally a book that was put out by 49 in Market, one of my favorite craft companies. It looked like this. And so what I've done is what I always do is I use a commercial product and I make it my own. And this is where we stand now after two demos. So I'm just gonna flip through and you can see, and what I've done is spend some time adding my own tabs and flip outs and things like that. And then I've spent some time layering with a little bit of collage, but mostly paints and sprays. And what I really love about working over a commercial product is that if you peek in the corners and in small sections, you're going to see some of the original markings from the original page underneath. But really, painting over it, it just totally makes it your own. And I don't think I have any more structural changes, but I have a feeling that as I work over it in collage, I will add more things poking out of the edges. So I am really for ease, more than anything else, gonna use a glue stick. And I'm just gonna glue this right in. And I am gonna make sure that, that I place it so the tab can be seen. I'm not going to add any paint layers or ink or marks until after I place it in the book. Yeah, I'm ha so happy with that. Just so happy. Anytime you use a glue stick, you want to quote unquote activate the glue. So you just, with your fingers, use some pressure and you'll get heat from your skin as well, which will get that glue working well. So I'm ready to move on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a combination of using more of dice, my dye sprays, which is what I used on the original layers, more of my paints, some stamps and ink pads, Definitely gonna use the mark makers. And I also have some washi and pet tape. All right, so I am just gonna start by getting this piece somehow integrated. And I think I'm gonna do that first with some paint. And I'm just gonna go ahead on the jelly plate. I'm gonna put a little bit of heavy cream. That is my go-to color but I wanna add a little bit of flavor. So I'm going to throw in just a touch of terracotta. Gonna even warm it up a little bit more. I have this great stuff on the brayer, so I think I might even just brayer a layer. You can see what I've added there already, it's just a touch. But anytime you can add a layer to anything, it is really worth doing. And now I'm gonna be able to pull the print. All right, again, it's very subtle, mainly just because of the coloration but it's a great base layer to start with. Let's do a little bit more. 
right there. And I noticed as I opened that that page, if you look at all these pages, they're, they're pretty inconsistent. And I mean that in a good way. There's a lot of change in value, darker spots, lighter spots. This, this page has just gone as a beautiful base, but it needs something. It really does. So I'm going to just pick up, yeah, a little bit, pretty randomly. Uh, full on print. I just want to pick up some. And already I like that so much better. And let's just see while I have some of that on the plate. Is there anywhere else I could use that? Maybe lighten that a little bit. Yeah. I think we're good there. It's drying on the plate. So not much is coming up, but I am getting some. Love that. I'm going to go with a little bit more paint. I'm going to go with a little bit of darker, well, mm, slightly darker. This one is my Paper Artsy Agave chalk paint. I love chalk paint in books because you can close the page as soon as the book uh, page dries and the pages will never, ever stick together. Now this is drying, which is good because I don't want it too fresh because I want this look of almost like an old fresco wall that has been out in nature and rained on and snowed on with sun beating on it for years. And chalk paint is the perfect way to get that, but also, the fact that it's almost dry is going to keep it looking aged. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a couple more things here. I am going to um, put a little bit of darker color. Yeah, definitely liking where these are going. And they're just feeling more like they belong to the book with every roll. Now I'm going to go in with heavy cream and I'm going to cover this whole thing. And then I'm going to pull a print. All right, so let's just pull the full print right now. And here we go, we get the reveal. Okay, so you can see the difference, especially if you rewind the videotape, but this is obviously so much more coded than this. But the fact that it had all of this underneath it gives it so much more interest. And I do got this, like, this great stuff here. And I'm still feeling like this is still a little blah. So I don't know, let's see, let's go in. Let's just go in a whole different direction. Let's go in with some terracotta, which is translucent. So how do we do? Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Again, rewind in the videotape. This is looking so much better. We're going to continue with the jelly plate, but we're now going to use the sprays. This is butterscotch, underwater, sunflower, morning mist, and honey. Um, oh, and coffee. Can't forget coffee. 
Uh, it's one of my go-tos for this style. I feel like it's a little vintage, but there's a little bit of sort of lighter and brighter. And then there's some darker tones. I think I'm going to start with honey. And let's go a little dark with the coffee. And so just take a quick look with the before. Again, I'm, this is very cool in tone and this is warm. So now I'm gonna add the warmth. And I'm kind of picking up somewhat randomly. And then I'm gonna get my brayer and I'm gonna brayer it out. It softens it up, it dries it, it takes away some of the quarreling. And I don't know, it's just so simple, but I think it just adds so much interest. And again, that contrast between the warm tones and the cool tones, like this is all cool. We got to get some warm in here, my friends. So let's just smack dab right there. And we immediately get those warm tones. And it's translucent, the dye sprays are matte and translucent, they're matte as long as they're not the metallics. So with a project like this and chalk paint, I want matte. Let's shift it up a little bit. Let's do some butterscotch. Mm, I can see I really like that. And we're gonna stick with the warm. Let's go a little dark again with some coffee. I love when it's flats like that too. Uh, pools up because you're just going to get so much more of a strong impact. And I think I'm going to put that smack in the middle. Yeah. Ooh, it's good. And then let's bring some of the honey or the butterscotch honey tone up at the top. Now, do you see all that? I don't like that. That's not what I'm going for. I just don't like those marks and lines. That's why I use the brayer because the brayer allows me to spread that out. It keeps some of the variability, the dark light, but it makes it so much more dynamic and it makes it less like a focal point, which is not at all what I'm looking, uh, looking for. That's a little too peachy pink for me. So let's change that. Let's add a little bit of underwater, which is probably what that was, but we also need some contrast. So for contrast, let's add, uh, let's add some honey. Let's see what I get. I'm going to, again, kiss it, which just basically means I'm gonna just touch it and lift it. And then I'm gonna brayer. I think you get the drill by now. And that's just, uh, it's just so much more interesting to me. I mean, a thousand times more interesting. So simple. And let's put a little bit of the green. Just highlight that with some depth. The thing I do want to work on these. They're looking naked. And I do have some spray right there. So why don't we just maximize that? and use up what we have on the plate. You can see that difference. And let's just continue to do that. I'm gonna use a little morning mist, which is a gray, green, blue. And I think I'm going to also use some butterscotch. You can see I like putting more than one thing on the plate at a time. I always just feel that it, it ends up being so much more organic. And don't like that coraling. That's what I call coraling. But that's okay because the brayer will take care of that. Yeah, I'm liking where that's going. I feel like that is 
just a little too sunshiny bright for this idea of old walls. So I am going to go dark with some coffee. Mm, licorice. Licorice is black. It's also a favorite. Let's pull some of that out. Uh, sometimes people think it's just way too dark, but again, it's translucent. So it's beautiful to add, and it's the such a good way to add a little bit of grunge to anything. So this has really turned from that little sunshiny moment to something a little bit more dark and I think more cohesive with the rest of the book. Let's add a little grit to this. Yeah, the licorice adds grit. It, oh yeah, love that. It makes the pages know that they've lived a life. Again, I love to flip through as I go to see how it's building. I really like where most of these pages are going. They're, co they're cohesive, but distinct. But I don't think these pages work yet. So we need, we need some stuff. So let's go. And that, I mean, that shifted it pretty dramatically. So I think I'm going to continue to work that and some other colors in here. And let's just, let's make these, let's make these work. More is more. So what am I noticing? I'm noticing that it's, it's except for that little bit of brown right there, it is really cool in tone. And I am feeling I could do it with a dye spray, but I, I feel like I'm going to go back to that terracotta and I'm going to warm it up. I'm going to use a combination of terracotta and ochre. And this is just going to brighten, warm this up. Now, I do want to make mention that this is translucent. The dye spray on my jelly plate is still there. It, it's on, all the dye spray is on my Rayer, it is all going to mix. So it's going to be warm, but it's going to be a bit of a gritty, messy, warm. All right, it's getting better, getting better. And let's just finish this off, this idea off with some warmer dye sprays. So let's do some butterscotch and let's do some honey. One's a little bit lighter, one's a little bit redder. I think it's gonna be great. Oh. Feeling it more, people. I'm feeling it more. All right, so we are going to do one of my walkthroughs. Let's just take a quick look. We got that. Can't forget this flip out. The tone of my computer is reading this as 
a little bit cooler than it is in IRL in real life. It, it's got more warm tones in person than it seems to have on the computer. <laughs>